And hey, we go live. Good evening, ladies and men folk. Welcome to we're already a week into twenty fifteen. It's a little late to say Happy New Year and all that stuff, but You can still say it. Happy New Year. They keep it up right. <laughs> hey, we made it to episode seventy three. Tonight you have Wait a your second. regular what, what what's the name of this podcast now? In case people forgot. Uh, that podcast thing that we do every week, except for when we don't, that we sometimes name it, except when we don't. But tonight is not one of those nights we'll actually name it. It is the Word Ninjas Live show podcast thing. Extravaganza. Live stream. A a palooza. Yes. Boogaloo. As always, I am your instigator of literary insanity and easily distracted by my co-hosts, Charles. And joining me tonight is Justin. I have hot chocolate. But no whipped cream. Hmm. I have stale marshmallows from two years ago, though. Kind of like whipped cream. (laughs) And we also have Calvin. I've got water. I'm boring. And I'm also slightly dehydrated. Well, that's no good. And for a moment, we had a Will and an Ed, Ed, but then their power went out. So perhaps they'll be able to join us later if electricity plays nice, but no guarantees. We shall see. In the meantime, you got us three. And seeing as it is a whole new year and a whole new month and all that good stuff. It's time to talk about all the various things and shiny baubles that are coming out to look forward to. And since we haven't done this for two weeks, we're a little slow. Bear with us. We got to do that and this and the other thing. Sacrifice some goats to make it all play nice because, you know, it is Google. All right. All sorts of stuff upcoming and coming up and all that stuff. Let's start off with books. Uh, There's actually nothing coming out next week that actually piqued my interest, at least amongst this list. I really don't care about the AP Physics 1 exam 2015 edition. I'm all about the GRE at the moment, so nuts to the AP Physics. Meh. I mean, to be fair, the darkest part of the forest does have some very nice cover art, but I know nothing about it. And while I know John Green is absurdly popular, and I should have read something by him by now, I have not. So I have no idea what Looking for Alaska is about. But hey, that comes out next week. So if you're a John Green fan, look forward to that. Or an Alaska fan. Or if you're trying to figure out where Alaska is. Mm-hmm. Alaska's probably the name of some girl. We'll have to wait until next week to find out. Hmm. And all sorts of other books and whatnots. For the week after, we have a very shirtless man on the cover, or burned. But I mostly just saw Veronica Mars' book, which is apparently the second book. I didn't know... They were doing a novel series for that. Skipping right over the Insurgent series, huh? I still haven't gotten to that one yet, so I know nothing about it. But if you want to, by all means. No, I haven't read it either. I just know that people do. I think I have one of the books in my pile, but considering my pile and shelf is 250 books strong at this moment, that doesn't mean much. Yeah, you and I both have a lot of reading to do. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently another volume of Black Butler comes out, but we'll get to that later in the next tab. And apparently you can also get a book on How to Be a Time Lord, the official guide, no less. Yes, official. Well, I mean, it says so right on the cover, official guide. Therefore, it must be. I'm sure it's sanctioned by the Doctor Who staff. Well, by the BBC, at least. Is it really? I'd be impressed. Well, the cover has BBC written on it, so hopefully that's legit. Sorry. There we go. 
unfortunately, they don't have any blurb about it or anything. So huh. that's because the book was written in the future. Oh yeah, stupid time travel. I'm not allowed to buy any more books, so it's kind of sad looking at all these. And nothing really jumped out at me for the last week of January, but that's just me. To each their own. It is kind of nice that Barnes & Noble's has this feature where you can see what's coming out which week and when and all that. Definitely worth perusing if you're in need of more reading material. I'm not going to get into February yet. Nuts to that. And since Barnes & Noble's is not the only place to find books, the only other ones that I really keep track of are Yen Press because I read too much of them already. They are primarily the ones releasing the latest Black Butler volume. Uh, that one, volume 19 which would make me about 17 volumes behind in my reading, at least for that series. And I wish they did larger screen images, things for the covers, because it's hard to see them and read them. There we go. Another Soul Eater volume, Kingdom Hearts, which I also wanted to get into but have yet to. Akami Kagil. Akami Kagil. No one can pronounce that one ever properly. But I've heard nothing but good things about that one. And I know the manga and anime should be on Crunchyroll. Because I'm pretty sure it's in my queue to watch and read and get to. Along with everything else ever. Oh, Crunchyroll has a... Uh... Manga thing, too? Oh, yeah. Pretty oh. extensive now, too. <clears throat> I did not know that. Um, They're actually super legitimate now. They're uh, advertising on uh, my favorite podcasts. Nice. Now, if only they advertised on ours. Yeah, one day. We're working on it. Someday. So, what is that? There's 14 issues or volumes, I guess, coming out in January alone. And they have all sorts of other stuff that I'm actually looking forward to coming out in the upcoming months, but we don't get to those until those months actually start. So, meh. And for the larger release stuff, apparently Viz is coming out with a couple three-in-one compilations like the Bleach and Naruto, mainly. So those are a lot more cost-effective than getting the individual volumes. So if you're willing to wait, or you're relatively new to one of those series, those are definitely the best way to go. And I am not familiar with half of these, which makes me sad. And I'm not sure why Resident Evil has its own manga. That feels weird. Because why not? I'm not sure how I feel about that. Uh, upset. <laughs> Terrified? Mm. How about both? That works for me. And I've also heard nothing but good things about Ranma One Half, but again, I'll get to it someday. I think I need another 20 lives or so to be able to read everything I say I'm going to read. And then some. And since we're not just books, we, I decided to toss some other stuff on here. Not the best list for video games being released, but it was one of the first ones I found, so I'm going to roll with that. For January, the only one that kind of intrigued me was Resident Evil Remastered, although I didn't do enough research to find out just what... Is that the original Resident Evil? Is it a compilation? What, what exactly are they remastering? remastering an already remastered version of Resident Evil. That seems so, unnecessary. It's not... It's tweaks on the original. I don't think it's the actual pure original uh, with static cameras and all that. Um, well, there might be static cameras in it, but hmm. 
There's uh, they've tweaked a few things and they've made some balance changes over the years, and I think those are staying. I don't think those are going to be the purest uh, uh, version, but I could be wrong. Well, seeing as I now have a PC again and I have a 360, perhaps I'll actually look into that because I've been meaning to play some Resident Evil for a while now. I just haven't had a means to. And maybe I'll get Grand Theft Auto V finally because I have 4, 3, and San Andreas and all those, so why not round it out? Do you have a uh, comparable graphics card? Yeah... Yeah, maybe. Not really. My PC is four or five years old now, so it's horrifically out of date in regards to technology. I thought it was, uh, I thought you bought that like a little more recently than that. No, it's at least four years old, I'm fairly certain. Because I got it in New York back when I was working full time in New York. And I had it for a little while before things all went to pot. Mm. But you should, you should be able to handle Grand Theft Auto V. Most of the time I just lower the resolution and some of the graphics settings for most of the games I play on it anyway. Mm. Just to make it easier. 108060 PC Master Race reporting in. And there's nothing else on here that I'm familiar with. So, Mayor? Yeah, the order coming out this year. The order of what? I don't know. That picture looks like the order. Maybe that's just a Resident Evil picture. Uh, no, the order 1886 comes out next month. Oh, next PS4. month. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Next month confuses me, actually, because you got Resident Evil Revelations 2, Episode 1, and Episode 2. It comes out the 17th for a lot of platforms, then the 18th for a couple others. And then Episode 2 is another week, and then Xbox Live and PC for another week. Why are they staggering things like that? That's just rude. Exclusivity deals with certain consoles. That's stupid. And it makes them a lot of money, which allows them to make more video games. Meh. Alright. And we also I also decided to toss in movies on the presumption that there were actually movies coming out this month that I even remotely cared about which apparently I don't. You've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> yeah, January is just sad. Nothing really jumped out at me because I don't know any of these. Then again, I never turn on my television, so I never see any of the trailers. So, but there's plenty of stuff coming out. I just don't know anything worthwhile. So it seems like January is going to be pretty quiet for movies. We kind of burnt out on all the good ones beforehand. Although I was recently told this week that one of my friends directed a movie that's coming out this month. Although it's still limited release. Uh, next tab. Americans. I might have to go into New York to actually see this one considering how limited the release is. But I saw his other movie which was 50 Pills, which was fantastic. So I'll probably almost likely make the effort to try and track this one down in theaters as well. And the trailer for it looks pretty good, too. So track that down on IMDb. And those are all the various things coming out in January, at least that we tossed in the show notes. If there's anything else coming out this month that piques your interest, by all means, post in the comments below. Talk to us on social media. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what we should be excited for. Continue our conversations. Hashtag Word Ninjas on Twitter. Yes, what he said. 
And stop the screen sharing. That's enough screen sharing for the moment. And then close all of those tabs so my computer stops being cranky. And then back to the show notes, and then the next topic, which is mine again, so I get to keep talking until the end of time. I tossed this one in this morning because it's bothering me. And I felt like we needed a literary topic for a literary podcast. Topic is, how many subplots are too many when outlining a story? This is something I'll be able to weigh in on as well, because when I'm writing a... Uh, <clears throat> I'm, right, I'm not actively writing it right now, but I have a... Uh, a multiple novel epic that I'm writing, which has a main cast of eight characters. And so many subplots ensue. And how many do you outline uh, is a great question. Well, I've just talked for like 20 minutes, so you can do this one for a little while. But, I, but I'm doing the next topic too. It's not fair. Well, you talk, then I fill in, and then Calvin makes sarcastic quips in between, as we do, and then uh, we turn again. Uh, I know we've been off for two weeks, but this is how it rolls. I'm sick. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It depends what, how much of it you're outlining. You can outline it by writing down a list of subplots that you want to hit at some point in the novel, like love interest, A and B, uh, character, uh, doesn't like character B for whatever reason, and then you write a couple of little pieces of it. But if you're spiraling out and writing like full outlines for various subplots, which may not necessarily move your main narrative along, you're probably going a little bit too far. And I don't know to the extreme that, TJ, you're, how, how many subplots you have outlined so far. Um, Only 50. That seems like a lot, uh, especially if you're writing the thing that I think you're writing. Uh, how, how much detail are, are you subplotting these things? Uh, at the moment, I'm still at the very beginning stages of re-outlining all of this stuff, and I'm slowly opening up that actual outline because I tossed it in Excel. And Excel takes forever on this computer. Come on. While he's doing that, my, my advice for <clears throat> subplot outlining would be to keep it very short and simple uh, because you don't really know right away where they're going to fit into your story. Uh, if you do know where they're going to fit, then by all means outline them. But uh, for a lot of like extra pieces of information, backstory, history, uh, interactions that kind of can go wherever you want, uh, keep them extremely vague in your outline and don't stress too much about them and don't write yourself into a corner so early. Uh, instead, keep them simple and then as your story progresses, your characters are going to naturally progress too and you'll be able to cull from your various list of subplots to help flesh out the story information. That, that would be my advice for uh, subplot outlining. So, At least if you're getting up to the 50s and you haven't even started writing their actual novel proper. I was just being silly. Back I, to the screen share. Because this... I'm hiding the two other novels in this outline because spoilers. But this is basically how, how I've been the very foundational outlining of it all. Because I want to have five acts and figuring out the themes for the overall story and the sub-story, the main character, the main antagonist, their relationship, and then the organizations that they're dealing with or are based in. And I'm slowly filling that in for mostly the others. This one is the slowest one for some reason, even though it's the first in the trilogy. But I want to start with this and then figure out how I can tie them all together and balance them out. So it's really just one main subplot, but across two, across a lot of various things. So it's figuring out the balance. 
It's mainly tricky for me because this is for a novel that is almost effectively 10 years in the making. Now, are these subplots like uh, B story and C story subplots, or are they uh, shorter tidbits of subplot? Uh, let's see. For some reason, I can't full screen the video screen share, so I don't see what's on that. Uh, it's basically a, the vertical or the columns <laughs> are the different acts, so how it kicks off and where it ends up. The rows are the overall story, which the main theme is control versus chaos, with the sub-story being the character's respective idealism versus insanity, and how those slowly progress throughout the plot. And I have the main character and what happens through him to him throughout the story, the main antagonist, what happens to him throughout the main story, and then the two's relationship throughout the story, how they kind of play off of each other back and forth. And then just my own notes for the or two main organizations that they're representing. I don't know if I would even consider these subplots. <clears throat> it sounds like they're main beats to your story. Um, I have a feeling with your main character interaction and development. Yeah, if there are going to be any subplots, they'll be based off of this, maybe. Like this is really how, how I want the story to be held together. Mm-hmm. But I know me. I don't want to overload it with too much stuff because that's what I do. Oh, so your fear right now is that this, which is a great groundwork that you've made, is going to slowly spiral out of control? That's why it's you... taken me three, not three years, good Lord, ten years to figure out this story because I keep on coming up with, well, what if we did this? Or what if I did it this way? Or what if we added that? And then I do different versions and alternate realities and stuff, and then 10 years later, I still don't have a finished story. Mm -hmm. Which is why I've forced myself to go to this three novel outline so that I can fit the main stuff that I want to fit, get all the various characters in there that I want, and all the various themes for each one without cramming it all into one story. So this is what I would do. <clears throat> I would make a new tab and keep this main story be outlined clean and subplot on another tab uh, to keep it distinctly separate from your main story beats so you kind of have a little bit more control. And then as you're writing your main story, you'll be able to pull in the main uh, subplot beats from the other tab and add them in and flesh them out. And you can always go back and retcon things. Uh, mm -hmm. If you get to Act 3 in Book 1 and you're like, ah, shit, I should have had this character be introduced in Act 2. Uh, how am I going to do that? Well, hey, that's what the writer does. That's part of writing. Mm. You're not going to nail it all on the first draft. Considering I've already done the first draft 10 years ago, yeah. You're not going to nail it on the... 14th draft. <laughs> Whatever number I'm up to at this point. Yeah, I seem to work well in Excel, mainly because of the day job, so this has been helping me at least try and put things into perspective of what I want to have happen when. And so I remember all the various tidbit ideas of how I want characters to progress and concepts to progress. And have you tried that timeline app that is always on uh, the Nano Reward stuff. Pairs well with Scrivener, supposedly. It's like Aeon timeline or something. Something like that. <clears throat> I have not yet. But if I can still snag it, I might. Because I keep forgetting that those rewards are a thing. You know what I used, I, I've used before is uh, I found a, uh, what do you call it, a subway map generator. Huh. And I used that as my uh, story outline. So each, you know, uh, rail color was a different character or a different arc uh, and how they interacted with each other. And the map itself was a literal map of locations. Uh, Interesting. So I could subway them around my world-building world. It was extremely elaborate and uh, somewhat cumbersome, but it was fun to look at when I was done. No. Well. I've set aside this entire month just for outlining and general 
research. So, yes, I'll get to it more in the podcast. But in my bedridden state, I too have been outlining a lot. Uh, Peter, on the comments, I can already see in my email saying, he, well, he said, Aeon, Timeline, and Scrivener are your friends. Snowflake it. Yeah, the Snowflake method is, it's the traditional basic method, mainly because it does work. And it's taught in every single creative writing class, because it works. I just don't want to. Although I probably will at some point anyway. I have a gigantic, uh, like, industrial-sized printer's roll of paper, if I can fit my hands on the screen. Perfect for mind maps. It's bigger than, <clears throat> wider than this, and it's gigantic, so I can make a map as big as I want because the paper is not being used for anything. We were just going to use it for scraps, so I can snag some. Because even the tabloid-sized paper tends not to be big enough because I can't write that tiny. So we'll see how that goes. And while I know that Calvin does not normally outline and write and spend 10 years working on a novel, I'm curious what his perspectives on kind of outlining stuff is. Um, in my line of writing, which is primarily like lyrics in like more short form stuff, outlining you wouldn't think is important, but it really is. In what way? Like outlining is important primarily for like certain like certain things you want to try to. Uh, uh, get across in your poetry, like certain, like a specific theme, or even just like simple little ideas. Even before all the rhyme schemes and everything uh, come into play, just basically like throwing, like throwing words, like throwing words out and uh, onto a page and seeing how they all like fit together, you know. Brings up a question that I had. When when you're writing lyrics, do you start with a, you know, non-rhyming, non-metered version of what you want to say, and then so slowly convert it, or do you start with a bunch of uh, rhyme schemes and <clears throat> uh, word pairing and and meter, and then try to convert it back out into a fully fledged story or a combination of the two? Uh, sometimes the meter happens, sometimes it doesn't. So I just kind of roll with whatever idea comes first. Sometimes rhyme schemes will uh, will come along and will actually help the process along a little better because that helps me figure out what rhyming pattern I'm going to use for the rest uh, for the rest of what I'm working on. Oh, wish I had like a super long-winded answer, but it's kind of simple. For, it's kind of simple for me, at least my uh, my workflow anyway. I try to keep it as simple as possible, especially seeing all the various things that I do in a given day. <laughs> Have you ever completely dismantled <clears throat> pieces of a of a song and used it in a completely different song or? Uh, lyric. I've never done that with lyrics, but I have done that uh, musically before. Like taking pieces of a song and made a completely different song with it. And have managed to mask it in a way that nobody realized that I stole from my own song. <laughs> You're already sampling from other tracks. <laughs> Hey, why not sample for myself? Yeah, it's not technically plagiarism if you wrote it in the first place and you yes. resubmit it to the next class. 
<laughs> Precisely. Or if I write a report at work about a system, and then I uh, I might uh, resubmit that report using a different system after changing about a dozen words out of 25 pages and uh, <laughs> functions as a report for the next system. And then I take the rest of the day off. Hey, whatever helps workflow uh, move quickly. <clears throat> yes, especially when the bar is extremely low. <laughs> so I love how the comments that we've been getting are not properly updating as they're supposed to. Not much of a surprise, but apparently some are even being marked as spam without letting me unmark them as spam. How would that even happen? I look at it on the page and it says marked as spam, but it doesn't give me any option to unmark it. Just remove, report, or ban. And yet when I look on the back end, it still shows up as a properly published comment not under the held for review or anything. Hmm. So I call shenanigans on Google and YouTube. So if I'm slow to reply to any of your comments, it's because Google's being silly. And I have to go into the back end community comments manager to see the full list. That's just silly. And that's also why I wasn't paying attention to your back and forth dialogue. So I have nothing to contribute. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> TLDR, I keep things simple. <laughs> Speaking of simple, we have a third topic that I added at the last second while CJ wasn't looking. Was someone hungry, perhaps? <laughs> I've been thinking about it a lot today, and I'm looking forward to on my second official day off to go get, and that is pizza. Uh, topic leader, Justin Pizza Isaacs, and the topic is, oh, I probably should have said my whole name on there. Oh, well. Topic, favorite pizza, pizza toppings. I really want a pizza, and we'll be getting some tomorrow. <clears throat> that is the whole reason why this topic is happening. So, yeah, what does everyone like on their pizza? What kind of pizza do you like? Crusts? Toppings? Uh, for me, uh, I will be going to a place near where I work. Uh, they have another outfit in between me and where I work, so I might visit there instead, assuming that the pizza will be largely the same. But they, uh, they have ridiculously <clears throat> dumb, awful pizza. And I say awful with a lot of uh, love. It's not good pizza, but it's so, it's it's like comfort food bad pizza, if you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's loaded with toppings. They don't, they don't, uh, they don't hold back at all. They have full slices of sliced meatball, none of that ground up hamburger crap. Uh, they've got Clams Casino pizza, they've got Buffalo chicken pizza, they've got their barbecue chicken pizza, they've got a uh, curly fry and hot dog pizza, which I may have to try because that sounds stupid hmm. and intriguing. I try it. Uh, I don't remember if they have a potato pizza or not, but I do love me a potato pizza. A little bacon and uh, cheese on top. I've never heard of that. You've never had a potato pizza? I have not. Have I. Picture mashed potatoes, loaded baked mashed potatoes, and then putting that on a pizza. Huh. It that is really good. Almost, it sounds almost like a pizza sandwich, seeing as how you have starch on the uh, bottom and the top. Uh, it doesn't have any red sauce, so it's like a white pizza. Oh, okay. If that if that helps convince you, it's literally just a loaded mashed potato on top of a pizza crust. No cheese? No, it's on top. It's loaded. It's a loaded... Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm. I'd be willing to try that. How do people feel about seafood on their pizza? I have a shellfish allergy, so that's out of the equation for me. 
Unless it's like uh, clams or oysters. I'd be yeah. willing to try that. <clears throat> clams Casino pizza is really good. I found that it can be good, but you really got to trust the place. Yes. Mm. It can go awry pretty quickly. Yeah. Oh, good lord. This is a dangerous website. How dare you commenters distract me? Uh, all right, I'm going to distract you guys with uh, an intriguing pizza that I've had quite a few times. Uh, there is this uh, pizza joint in Williamsburg that makes a chicken Caesar salad pizza. Ooh. Hmm. It... Like, it's it's the greatest thing in the world. Is it breaded or grilled chicken? Um, grilled chicken. Okay. Mm. It's basically, like... Basically, you make a, a chicken Caesar salad and throw it on a crust and uh, and bake it. Sold. I've I've only seen it in two places. The pizza shop in Williamsburg and the pizza shop near my job. I don't eat the one. I don't eat the uh, the chicken Caesar pizza at the uh, pizza shop near my job, and I love that pizza shop, but they. I don't know how this place in Williamsburg does it, but it's just it's just on the money. <laughs> how do you cook the so there's lettuce on it and stuff? Uh yeah, there's lettuce on it and everything. That's the part that confuses me. I don't know how lettuce goes on a pizza. Is it hot lettuce? Yeah. Like everything, like everything is hot. Everything is hot, but the lettuce it's romaine lettuce. And it keeps up his it, the consistency it keeps up very well somehow mm. i don't know how but it meant the consistency is still pretty on point hmm. so i'm intrigued cautiously what? intrigued <laughs> <clears throat> like if forever uh, if you guys are ever in new york again we will go on a field trip to this pizza shop Yay. Field trips. And what's great about this pizza shop, there's a Gorn Brothers right next door to it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, so it's over there. Okay. Yeah. Is that some sort of hat store? Yes. yes. Shocking. We brought you to it. That is that. Is so that, is that, that is the hat store that I went to? Okay. Yeah. They have three shops. One in, uh, one in Manhattan, two in Brooklyn. The pizza shop happens to be right next to the, the uh, one in Williamsburg. That's dangerous. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a big fan of pizza. <laughs> pizza, um, pizza help, help me, uh, help me through 2014. What <laughs> 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 of the many things? Mm. Yes, yeah, so I'm rewarding my long-term sickness with pizza. I'm going to be comparatively boring with my pizza options. Uh, the first one is the dollar slice pizza, which is on the same block as the New York office, because you get it right out of the oven. It's just plain cheese, and it's only a dollar. Hey, say what you want about dollar pizza. Dollar pizza is awesome for what it is. Yes. Yes. And you can get two slices and a can of Coke for two seventy-five. So it's kind of hard to beat that, especially in Manhattan. Oh, yeah, that's true. And then my comfort food pizza is Hawaiian with jalapenos. So that's my wife's pizza. Ham, pineapple, jalapenos on a cheese pizza, preferably from my hometown pizza place. It's a little... Greasy, but that's what makes it tasty. And it's basically what I was raised on. That is my childhood, so... It's going to be hard to ever give that one up. Although, I can't really do jalapenos as much as I used to. So, I might have to downgrade to banana peppers or something a little less spicy. But that's trickier to find at a uh, pizza place. 
before we move on, does anyone put anything on top of their pizza? Parmesan, oregano, red pepper flakes? <laughs> red pepper flakes. You're yes. one of those? Although it takes forever because the stupid shaker tops are never large. They don't have large enough holes for the red pepper flakes ever. And it is. No, the covers come off. Well, who, did, who does that? The place in Williamsburg, they just have the, uh, the gigantic uh, red pepper flake container that has the, that has the uh, two sides, the, uh, the uh, poor side and the uh, shaker side. Well, they are fantastic people, then. <laughs> you, you will have no problem with that one. Oh, God. That... As... Ugh. No. One of the comments, whiskey pizza... Uh, I think that was a joke comment. That, because people know I'm an alcoholic. We all are. We all are, yeah. That would be dangerous. Potentially interesting, depending on what sort of meat toppings you might try to pair that with, but I would be hesitant. I, I'm going to need an explanation for whiskey pizza. I just noticed my lower third wasn't showing up. The comment is just purely whiskey pizza, question mark. So. Oh, question mark. Uh, I'm going to go with no. <laughs> whiskey and pizza is pretty much going to be my entire day tomorrow. Huh. That sounds like a good day. And apparently I don't care about saying my last name because it's been on my lower third this entire time. <laughs> I think I'm the only one that doesn't have my last name on here. And, of course, Google Hangouts, the lower third isn't working right now for me. It's been hit or miss. It's Mostly miss. Yeah. It's a little spazzy lately. I feel like they've done some tweaks when we weren't, when we took our two weeks off and the tweaks aren't fully working the way they're supposed to. Shocking. Surprise, surprise. But it is what it is. And now I want pizza. Me too. I haven't had tomorrow. dinner yet. <clears throat> oh, today. I'm not going to have pizza tonight. I already have some delicious food waiting for me. I made bell peppers and beef last night. And nice. it came out ridiculously good. I should make some stuffed peppers. Mm. I haven't done that since first college. What would you stuff them with? Uh, rice, beans, uh, meat of some sort. What would I stuff them with? I don't know. I'd have to think about it. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> rice, mushrooms, yes. and probably chicken. Mushrooms aren't even an animal or a vegetable. They're Why just delicious. They no. So. False. Patently false. Actually, put uh, mushrooms in my uh, bell peppers and beef. Nice. None of you put mushrooms on your pizza, right? I have. No. It's kind of, it's it's hit or miss for me. Just yeah. nothing but a full mushroom pizza. My boss does that. That would be a little bland. You need mm, something mushrooms and some olives. flavor on it. He adds olives to add to the oil. Okay, olives. Olives along with it, yes. Mm. I'm all right with that. Usually during my one month or one night of gaming per month with my friends, they end up doing black olives with uh, barbecue chicken on it. Mm -hmm. Which isn't <laughs> as bad as one would think, but I wouldn't go out of my way for it. Seems like a clash of flavors. It's okay. And to our viewers, post your pizza preferences. Just preferably not whiskey pizza. <laughs> I'm still curious about whiskey pizza. Is this a thing that's going to be attempted when we have our own headquarters? Uh, I can make a whiskey sauce... I've made whiskey sauce for things before, like uh, whiskey applesauce on pork. Ooh. 
That would be uh, good. That's one of my uh, go-to meals for first dates. Hmm. I don't have that happen anymore, obviously, but it would be my go-to. <laughs> hmm. I know we are planning on doing all sorts of various baking and cooking possibilities with moonshine at some point, but I guess we'll have to add pizza to the list. CJ, can we uh, use uh, company money to buy a barrel? A particular barrel. Uh, it could be a first run barrel, and, or it could be a uh, new barrel and we'll uh, age our own white whiskey in it. Are we using my money or yours? Uh, the company's money. I vote money. yours. The company's money. Even share. I vote the portion of the company's money that's yours. I don't think it works that way. <laughs> I'll make a note of it. <laughs> and I'll make an addendum. Make sure it's Justin's money. I'm going to earmark that. Somehow. <laughs> yeah, the 2020 budget has been, finally been approved. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Where's the show notes? There they are. Too much screen sharing. Not enough show notes. Too many different tabs. Uh, I think we've pretty much burnt out on pizza talk. Till tomorrow? Till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. Probably okay, come lunchtime. We'll... To... Maybe I'll live stream my eating pizza tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe I'll go to my pizza joint tomorrow for lunch and uh, Instagram which one I get. Where would I go? I'd probably go to the Jazz Pizza Place. That one's <laughs> better than the other one. Yeah, we'll see what happens tomorrow. In the meantime, let's roll into the next segment, because why not? The next segment is the Highlights Reel. And it's all from me, because I felt like filling that in for a little bit. Because it's sad to see the highlights reel with nothing in it. For the, highlight, for the book highlight of the week, I tossed in the book that I finished. The first book of 2015 that I have read. One down, 203 billion to go. Uh, the book, specifically, was Book Girl and the Captive Fool by Isuna Hasekura which is the third in, I want to say it's a 10-book series or so. And I'm really glad that I have the next five books in the series because, god damn it, the last two pages pissed me off. <laughs> Should yeah. I stop reading the crappy book that I'm reading and start reading good books? I'm going to take a poll you're reading room. now. It's... I, I haven't... I've been quote unquote reading it for the last year. If you can't really get into it anymore, then it's okay to put it down and I've try. never gotten into it. Then put it down, good. Try something else. Okay. You don't have to force every single book. I have a long track record of always finishing books even if I hate them, and I think I should stop. Cuz I'm an adult now and I can make my own decisions. And you can always <laughs> just set it aside on your to-be-read pile to be read again later. You don't have to throw it out or anything. Put in the back. Yeah. But this book really made me angry, and I can't tell if I want to go back to the first two books to reread them and see if I missed some subtext or if I just want to keep on going to see what happens. Because one of the main assumptions I've had about this main character just got shattered. And I'm angry about it. <laughs> and I can't tell if I was fooled or if I just wasn't paying attention or what. So that the fourth book in that series may be the next one I read. We'll see. And because we haven't had enough of this yet, more screen sharing. I'm glad that the screen sharing has been reliable so far. You know what we should do, CJ? We should get another computer up and running that's constantly screen sharing that isn't you. 
that we could cut to? Uh, theoretically, I could do that with the PC next to the Mac in the future, presuming that my Wi-Fi can handle that. Mm. Yeah, I don't know how Google Hangouts will like that bandwidth. But we can give a test run at some point, see how it goes. But, oh, where did those go? Oh, yeah. I put them away. But I received a gigantic <clears throat> box of all sorts of wayward raven shiny baubles from all of their t-shirts to all of their comics and a couple prints as well. So we'll be giving, we'll be doing some giveaways at some point when it's deemed appropriate. But I read through all six issues across their three series, and I am curious to see how the storylines progress from here because it's they're pretty solid comics, and I like the varying art styles. So I thought I'd toss them on here, even though they've been in the highlights previously, and we've even talked to them. We're allowed to go back to things. Is it under books or comics? Load. It's under comics. But the three series was The Horsemen, which is the four horsemen of the apocalypse, only it's cosmic. So you have a galactic battle going on, and the four horsemen are trying to f figure things out and do all sorts of crazy stuff. You have Signed, which has a lot of Greek mythology and craziness in it. I'm not quite sure where that one's going. I feel like I need another issue or two to figure out what's really happening and why. But I do like the Greek mythology. And The Ascendant, which is my favorite so far, because it's all about a duke of hell, and he tends to hang around a lot of crazy, weird, evil peoples, even including Dr. Faustus. So definitely check these guys out. Purchase their comics and all their other shiny baubles because they're entertaining. And if you track down the episode where we interviewed them, you will see they are our type of weird. Yes. Yes, indeed. And next up is a place called Arbordale Publishing. I feel like we've covered all the various publishers that we all respectively know and are familiar with, so I'm trying to branch out a little and see what else there is out there. This one's a nice, easy one to kind of start our year off, get us into, get us back on track. They mainly do a lot of picture books and academic educational stuff, primarily for children. Uh, thought our books would show it. There we go. But it's a lot of these somewhat large print ones that have a lot of imagery and are still educational and good for children and all that. And they were on one of the, my various lists of publishers for 2014. So I thought I'd start rolling through those in 2015, because why not? And you never know, some of our viewers may be focusing on children's books or young adult or educational you never know. Ah, stop doing stupid things. Next tab. I said next tab. There we go. And the last thing in the highlights is a website called Six Word Memoirs. Can you write a memoir in six words? A lot of people say yes, and they have. And you can submit your own, and you can read everyone else's. And it's a fun little thing that you can check out. Often underestimated a simple spontaneous hug. Mm. True. Let's see. What are the most commented on? <laughs> Regretting it like an Obama voter? Really? Uh, let's. What, what's the most favorited? How about that, rather than the most talked about? Okay, I can see how the top one is the best. So many wrongs left to right. 
And it's a play on words, considering they wrote it as, like, a writer would write and all that. Ooh. For the audio listeners. I appreciate that. Not enough scotch. (laughs) I'm intrigued by the fourth one. She became the hero she needed. Mm. That's a good one-liner. CJ, are you uh, going to scrub this database and use it for all the future one-liners? Is that your plan? No. Wow, CJ, all these one-liners are six words long. It's pretty weird that you did that for all of 2015. Yeah, I wonder how that happened. Hmm, it's so strange. And they're, they've all been really clever and insightful, too. Uh, you know, I have my moments. Hmm, interesting. And off the screen share again, and then back to the show notes. And all the links to these are in the show notes over at fcwriters.com. It's on the homepage because it's the latest episode. The whole backlog's there and whatnot. Oh, God, the next segment is productivity highs and lows. Yay. I like this section this year. This can expand to the past, whenever the heck our last episode was, considering we took a bit of a hiatus. Correct. Uh, My productivity's highs and lows were, I survived the holidays, mandatory vacation, and 2014 in general, which I consider a pretty productive thing, all all things considered. And my doomsday desk for work has been built and is now in use. How is that working out so far? Pretty good. I'm happy with it. Thanks to Will and Ed for helping me put it together. And then I was stuck painting it, unfortunately. But it's a 20-inch tall podium, basically, because it's just put on the desk that's already there with various built-in shelves Although the shelves can be pulled out, and I covered them in whiteboard paint, so I can write notes on them as I need to. Or smack people with if I need to. You never know. And it's a little larger than my makeshift standing desk, which was just a stack of papers and my GRE study books, which were smaller than my laptop is wide, so it was not exactly stable. So I'm pretty happy about that. And it would have been very hard for you to accomplish one of your 2015 goals if you were using the books as a desk. Yeah. The actual book. Considering I'm supposed to actually be reading those and learning from them, I should probably not have them right under my laptop. And then my last productivity downside or negative one was I was going to do a lot of recording over my break, and I didn't. I did maybe a quarter of how much I thought I was going to do. So there's still a lot of recording stuff on my to-do list that I need to take care of, possibly this weekend, since it's relatively open. We shall find out next episode if that actually happened or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did Justin fare? Uh, so the... Chris Freak went great. Uh, New Year's went okay. I ended up working basically every single day leading up to my vacation. Uh, And then the rapid decompression of going from working 70 hours a week to going on vacation uh, dropped my immune system down to the point where I got a massive head cold. Uh, And I broke a fever at one point and uh, was basically bedridden for three days. and that was a great start of the vacation. And then uh, the day I started getting better, I had to go into work. Yay, <laughs> vacation. So that was yesterday. So today is my was my first official day of not being sick and being on vacation. So I decided to add a couple more days to the end of my vacation so I could actually have a legitimate vacation. <laughs> but onward to productivity. So like I said, the whole last week I was sick. But in my uh, 
bedridden sickness, I was able to put together the setting and a few story beats for the story that I'm writing. And we'll get to the setting later in the podcast. Uh, Also, I was sick, but I uh, started formulating the business plan and financial plan for uh, Inspire the Muse. And uh, I was sick, but I was also on vacation. And I ended up visiting some friends, doing some gaming, some writing, and some cleaning, uh, despite being sick. So this was all three of these were highs and lows. Lows because I was sick. Highs because despite being sick, I still got a whole bunch of stuff done. And how about the Calvin? Let's see. I'm still hacking away at uh, Infinity's Light Project, which is uh, songs are coming, but I'm just, I'm just, I feel like I'm having not as much time as I thought I would have to get everything done, mainly due to other projects of doom that don't seem to end ever so that's a it's a high and a low right there and earlier this week I got tired of my desktop being a slow piece of crap and I wiped the hard drive and started from scratch and reinstalled everything it runs much better now Yay! I still have to uh, install the uh, webcam drivers, though. I keep forgetting to do that. <laughs> Oops. That's why I got old Lappy here. <laughs> and I decided to buy my mother a Chromecast as a uh, late Christmas present. I would have actually bought it for Christmas, but I needed to purchase a uh, Wi-Fi extender because, unfortunately, the apartment is made out of concrete and lead. Which is perfect for reception. Mm -hmm. Faraday cages everywhere. (laughs) And the uh, reception barely trickled into the living room. Just barely. Hmm. So the Wi-Fi extender has taken care of that, and now my mom can watch Netflix and Hulu and everything else to her heart's content. Yay! And that made me happy. Hmm. Those are my three. All right. And, nope, not that segment, the one before it. The whatever Justin feels like finally labeling this one as at some point segment. Oh, crap. I totally forgot to actually name it something reasonable. But whatever inspired us since last podcast, basically. I have purchased a magical notebook, mainly because it's cool looking. I got it at the... uh, Bryant Park Holiday Marketplace because they have a place that actually does handmade covers for notebooks. Probably doesn't show up well on the screen, but this one has a little scorpion on it for Scorpio and whatnot. Nice. I've been making a point of filling it with mostly just little one-line reminders to myself of stuff that I either accomplish, makes me happy, encourages me, Basically just a positivity notebook for 2015. Because sometimes I need positivity, and I need to be reminded of what makes me positive. So that is what that is for. And while not in the show notes, one of my author friends came out with a new book last week, which reminded me that I need to actually get it. And she inspires me to actually finish my damn story because she comes out with one like every year at this point. Hmm. And I think this is her sixth one. Even the score. And I had to repurchase Queen's Man because every time I lend it out, I never get it back. It's that good. Apparently. 
Well, to be fair, it is a good book, but I don't like my books wandering away and never coming back. Uh, what inspired Justin? So during my uh, in feverish state, <clears throat> I came up with the setting of uh, the novel that I'm writing, which was originally located in a cabin in the woods, super cliche, horror location. Uh, I was really not happy with it all the way through and everything that it represented. Uh, so I was trying to think of a new place to set it. And uh, I'd still need to be a remote cabin of some sort. And then I remembered, hey, I used to go visit uh, a family friend's cottage in Addison, Maine uh, every year for the summer. And uh, it's right on the ocean. And it's uh, got some wraparound water features. It's got... You know, your low tides, your jetties, it's got an island. Uh, in my story that I'm writing, it's going to have a storm shelter because there's no basement. So that was a pretty big sticking point. I kind of need a basement in my story, which an ocean uh, an ocean cottage is not going to have a basement. It's going to be on piers because it's in the ocean. Nice. So... Uh, that's where I decided to add the storm shelter in the back of a hill. <clears throat> Makes sense because if this cottage doesn't have power, they can use it as a refrigerator and as you know a uh, closet of sorts uh, during the summer months. And then if there's a big storm, then uh, my character can flee to it and then discover all sorts of unsightly, nasty things going on inside. Hmm. So that will be the setting of my story, and uh, so I was inspired by it. For sure. And how has Calvin been inspired since last episode? Well, since this uh, Infinity Slide project has been uh, moving along, I've been uh, trying to gain inspiration from various composers, from, from uh, various uh, time periods. Well, for the most part, uh, most of the most of the composers that uh, I've been trying to draw inspiration from have been around over the past hundred or so years. Uh, most of them uh, pretty uh, relatively modern day, and from various uh, have covered various uh, uh, various media from anime to TV to movies and everything in between. I actually have a short list of uh, who have been uh, influencing me lately. I have, let's see, who do I have here? I've got John Williams, like Star Wars, Star mm. Wars movies, etc. Danny Elfman. You might recognize some of his music from like, uh, The Simpsons theme. Uh, yeah, Pee-wee's, uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Was Pee-wee's Big Adventure? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Et cetera. Let's see who else. Nobuo, and Nobuo Uematsu. Yep. Final Fantasy series. <laughs> Philip Glass. I don't, like. I find, I find, uh, him to be, like, a very strange inspiration, but, like, his unusual uh, composition style like is, like really draws me in and I just love it. <laughs> uh, Yoko Kano, who composed the uh, soundtracks to Evangelion, Cowboy Bebop, and Wolf's Rain. Richard Jakes, who is a, uh, a video, uh, video game soundtrack composer. And Henry Mancini. It's a good mix. So I've got uh, a little bit of everything. Uh, trying to uh, get uh, get sparks going for me, and I think it's working out pretty well. I look forward to next month once I actually start writing my novel, because then I get to build my soundtrack again. <laughs> and I already know what artists are going to be part of it. Nice. 
mainly um, ES Posthumous and Epica nice. for the orchestral background soundtrack, and then some Louis Armstrong. Ooh. Because reasons. Because awesome, that's why. Yes. For some reason, Slash is a fan of Louis Armstrong. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. But that's not until next month. First, I still have to finish all the outlining. But uh, before the outlining, we have Muse Food. Which means the next tab... And then the screen sharing again with the pushing of the buttons and the hiding of my face. I'm willing to take the second page, but you two have to fight it out for the first page. Uh, I like something in the one-worders, so I'll take those and an additional tab. So... Uh, Calvin, you can choose between one-liners and story cubes, and I'll take the other thing. Um, I'll do the uh, one-liners. All right. How about it? All right. The one-liners for this week are as follows. It's snowing on Mount Fuji. I need you to do me a favor that's going to get us both in a lot of trouble. That sounds familiar. <laughs> It's snowing upwards again. You can't kill curiosity. We've tried. Go clear your head before he blows it off your shoulders. Damn. All that's left are the blueberries. I didn't do it. How can something so cute be so dangerous? Tomo. We were both on the same page in that one. Tiny <laughs> <laughs> Python, but it's not broken. It it just isn't finished. And finally, I love Canadians. They just don't give a shit. <laughs> yes, folks. Sometimes writers use bad words. And not that was language. actually a randomly overheard quote of the day. Yes. <laughs> a pretty amazing random one at that. <laughs> I like blueberries. I'm offended by the third to last sentence. <laughs> Fourth to last. Fifth to last. Your one word writing prompts for today are and these seem to be coming over coming in pairs. Conference and receptionist. Leftovers and casserole. Speech and shaft. That doesn't really work that well. Nightmare and daydream. Rush and smolder. Everything but shaft and speech pretty much uh, go together. Your uh, Rory story cues for today are guy knocking on a wall. Uh, a music note that somebody who, that knows how to read music can have a better description of. The comedy and tragedy masks, although it looks pretty much like a smiley face and a sad face. A padlock. Uh, a, two people, looks like a couple hiking, and the guy's pointing over, hey, look at this. Uh, a uh, Kit Kat bar being broken. A guy holding up a present. A, uh, a black submarine and a uh, office building complex. Or an right. apartment. Yeah, open to interpretation. No. Your musical prompt for this week is whole note A, half note C, quarter note E, half note D, Quarter note A. And your artistic prompt for this week is never give up. Make of these prompts what you will, 
if you happen to create a short story, flash fiction, musical piece, sketch, drawing, anything, we would love to check it out. You can send us an email with the URL or link or whatever. The email address is wordninja at fcwriters.com, conveniently located at the bottom of the page for prompts. Because convenience. And off of screen share. And then scrolling down, blah de blah. Now oh, yeah, events. It is 2015. So all of the conventions for 2015 are slowly coming up, including the one that's in, like, two weeks. Good lord. And, uh, well, I'll be specific. That one is called You're a Minicon. It is January 16th to the 18th. It's in Meriden, Connecticut. And so much back and forth. Because they finally updated it, yes, we're doing more screen share, deal with it. <laughs> they updated their hall plan. We are on the hall plan, finally. In the lower left corner, full coverage writers. Writers was cut off at a point because, I guess, poor coding, but we are there. So if you happen to be able to make it to this convention, you'll know where to find us. And it's just yourminicon.com. Nice and easy. I'm looking forward to that one. Should be a nice way to kick off the year. Mm -hmm. And also happening this year is, well, we don't have anything else on the calendar until May with Book Expo. I'm still fighting to see if we can get press badges, but that's surprisingly difficult. Thankfully, we still have time for that. And Kineticon, we are confirmed as vendors. That's not until July, thankfully. Still working on press badges for that as well. Press takes a while. They're, they tend to be slower on that than vendors and special guests and all that. And Inconceivable is not until August. And I think registration for that starts up later this month, so... Considering that we know basically everyone who runs that and most of the vendors who will be there, I'm sure we'll be able to get in on that as well. That's all we have on the calendar so far. But the year is young, so we'll see. I'm sure I'll be adding other stuff to that slowly. Probably Brooklyn Book Festival. Would be nice if we can get press for that one this year. Hmm. And who knows, maybe we'll be able to go as press for a couple other conventions because we're slowly getting invited to more. It's just figuring out travel logistics. Yeah. Conventions are far away. Even if they're only Depends one on. state away. That too. And some of us don't have driver's license. And by some of us, I mean me. Well, someone I... else in the crew doesn't. <laughs> So really, two-fifths of the crew do not have driver's licenses. Hmm. Uh, yeah. That's something. Well, we make it work. Yep. If you do happen to want us to attend or cover a convention, hit us up via email. Let us know what you want us to try or talk to the convention staff. Promote us. Say, hey, we want these people to show up either as vendors, as press, whatever. Give us the heads up, and we'll see what we can do to make it work out. I'm all for going as press to various things so we can get coverage and then toss it up on our channel and our website so you guys can see all the crazy shenanigans that go on. Just give us enough forewarning, please. Because all of us do tend to have full-time jobs and other responsibilities that are hard to get away from last minute, so planning is appreciated. Uh, well, yeah, I know Justin can just leave at a moment's notice. He can do whatever he wants, but the sure. rest of us, we're kind of stuck. Yeah. And that's 
everything we've got for our first episode of 2015. Which means it's time to start closing things out. If we have entertained you in any way, shape, or form, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. You can watch, comment, and thumbs up all of our various videos. We have the entire backlog, all 73 episodes of Word Ninjas Live. We have a lot of... We have more and more gaming shenanigans. We have a couple just crew shenanigans. We have any press stuff that we manage to get tossed up on there as well, all in various playlists. Definitely check them out. If you want to talk to us via social media, you can talk to us on Twitter at FC Word Ninja. Bonus points if you use the hashtag, hashtag Word Ninjas. You can follow us on Tumblr, fcwordninja.tumblr.com, or Facebook, facebook.com slash fullcoveragewriters. Talk to us. Converse with us. We enjoy talking to you all, both listeners and viewers, and anyone that we happen to meet in person. And if you want to be extra special, you can help fund all of our various endeavors so that we can afford to travel to these conventions and events and whatnot by perusing our Etsy store. All purchases help to pay for stuff like audiobook recording costs, convention attendance coordination, tech recording upgrades, which for some are desperately needed, and, you know, the normal global domination through the written word, the normal everyday costs. And as always, the Word Ninjas live show is brought to you by Full Coverage Writers, which is where you can find all of the show notes, all of the muse food, Everything else that we do, fcwriters.com, it's all up there for you to check out. And if you want to talk to us individually, you are very daring. But if you still want to do so, you can track me down on my personal Tumblr, fancypantswolf.tumblr.com. I'm trying to be more reliable on the Fairy Tale podcast as Makarov on Monday nights via their YouTube channel, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And all the various other methods can be found on our About Us page on the website. How about Justin? Oop, I was on mute. Now I'm not. Yay, yeah. we're a professional podcast. Obviously, we've been at this for 73 episodes now. Right. You know how it goes. So you can find me on my personal website, which is actually just a personal Tumblr redirect, haha, at mechanicaljustin.com. You may notice there's nothing there right now. One of my goals this week while I'm on vacation is to fill the crap out of that thing. Uh, you can also find me on my productivity website, facingmyreality.com, which has also been remaining largely empty with a similar story. A similar story that I keep saying every month or so. And uh, the Twitter handle for that is also Facing My Reality. And how about Justin? No, we just did Justin. How about Calvin? My personal website is at mechanicaljustin.com. <laughs> We're professionals. All right. Uh, you can find me uh, browsing around Tumblr here and there at instacal.tumblr.com. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at CCWII. And you can check out some of my music that I've put together at soundcloud.com slash soundsbycalvin. So there you have it. And for our various crew members who are not able to join us because of lack of electricity, which does tend to make things tricky, you can find all of their contact info in various places on the internet through the show notes on the website or just the About Us page where it's all there. So you have the nice convenient list with all the links and whatnots. Go track us down and talk to us. Yes. And that wraps up episode 73 of Word Ninjas Live, the first episode of 2015. Hooray! Yes. Got to figure out what we're doing for episode seventy-four next week. God help us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure something out. We're good about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I already have a talking point. Yay! Woo-hoo. Maybe I'll actually submit things to the Muse Food too. Gasp.
Yeah, I should do the same as well. That's why we I keep poking to... you guys on Skype. We all we all need to play our part. <laughs> Especially CJ. Yeah, I know. I got to pick things up a bit. I've been slacking. It's just so disappointing. I'll try and do better this year. No promises, though. But yes, that is the end of the episode. Again, feel free to continue commenting, talk to us via other social media outlets, continue our conversations, and we shall see you all next week. Same time, same channel, all that good stuff. Until then, have a good week, everyone. Adios. Bye-bye.